Hello everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art Paint Alongs. And so it's Thursday night and tonight um, we're going to have a fun time because I really screwed up during this, during um, my first attempt in this afternoon in my class. So um, we're going to do a beautiful magnolia. We're going to change things around a little bit and um, I'll show you what I learned by this, <laughs> this afternoon. So let me, um, well, actually first let's see what beer we have. Today we have a Pipeworks, Pipeworks Premium Pilsner Beer and it is made in Chicago. So a local beer, beer brewery, that's local Pipeworks, it's called Brewing Company in Chicago. Hey Phil, hey Tina. And we're gonna have a good week, a good weekend hopefully. And um, let's see if I can do this pour. <laughs> see if I can practice some more of the pours. It's a longer, it's longer stem, a longer glass. So, oh look at that. I actually did it okay this time. So let me just see what this um, one will be here. Let's give that a, I'm going to say, let's give that a 9.5. Very good, but not the best I've had. <laughs> so 9.5. All right. So um, today, let me just show you really quickly what I did this afternoon. And so we got kind of carried away and kind of made a lot of mistakes, a lot of changes I got to make. So. I'll, I'll let you know about that and look at it in the back of another sheet of paper. <laughs> Maybe that was a problem. All right. And so let's just um, go through first off and show all those newcomers here um, what my website is. Um, I still haven't done my <laughs> have done my website. Now you get all the information on my website of everything I'm doing. And actually this Friday, this coming Friday, I am going to do a demonstration up in Harvard. If you're close to this area where I live near Chicago, um, up in Harvard. At the Star Line, um, I'm a president of the Lake Region Watercolor Guild, and they're doing a show there. And I'm just going to do a demonstration in watercolor. I'll probably do two of them because it's a, like a, it's a long night, and so I'll probably do two of them. And so that's um, and again, all this information you can get here on my website. All okay, right, supplies. Um, these are the supplies I'm going to be using, and my brushes, um, which I'm on, I got some new brushes. Now I will be carrying all the whole buying gold brushes probably in about a couple of weeks um i'm going to be carrying all of them uh, all the brushes these are just my um whole these are my becker art brushes which i have only have six of them but i'm going to carry the whole line because they are whole buying gold brushes and so if you want to um, get another brush that is a different size from what i'm using and um, you can do that hopefully in time um, i just contacted them and, and see if i could do that and they said sure and so i will be probably carrying some of those and now to the value study. Here's we here we go. <laughs> what a mess we had this afternoon. I just um, actually the students probably did better than I did. So if you look over here, here's what I had done. And if you look, this is the image <laughs> that I was painting from. Nothing like this. And a couple problems I had was one, and all of us we kind of had the problem was a drawing of this flower or bud or blossom was a little bit too large, and it just it was kind of flat looking and actually what happened it was just became a bullseye a bullseye effect of it just right in front and so there's no dimension in that and the lighting i didn't get at all i mean the lighting that the there's the sun right and i did the lighting is hitting around the edges and also through the blossom which i didn't get and um and i painted this about three times <laughs> so so we were really working hard and i used some colors that were just not the colors i should have used I should have never used orange. I'm not sure why I use this big orange here and everything when there's absolutely no orange. And the background here is kind of gray and I should have went with that so that it pops out this area here, which is more golden. And so gold, yes, orange in this area and maybe even a little bit more reddish pink in that area because it's um, really a lot more lavenders. And in the background, there is some green or just um, colors that are muted. And so that will bring out the light light pastel color here because this is really our light area but it's still darker right here if you look at the value study you see that it is darker up in the sky area and um lighter in the bottom where so and here i did that after the first wash i didn't have it dark enough then i had it really too dark and then i had to use the stencil and so i mean it's okay but not what i wanted to come across and so if you look over here I also redid the drawing because this big bruised bullseye right in the front here just doesn't work. Um, as you can see, it's just, it's a bullseye. One blossom, come on. It's supposed to be a magnolia. I think it's called a star magnolia or something. 
So I did the more of a star right here, but I look at how I gave it more dimension. So I brought these petals outwards at you. So that's gonna be a little bit of a drawing issue that you're gonna to have to kind of deal with. And so um, I also put another bud right here, a regular. Um, <laughs> so this tree is a hybrid of two different types of magnolia <laughs> blossoms. That's okay. We can do whatever we want. We're the artist, right? And so I made two and I put this one farther on to the bottom here. And so here's a drawing and you can check out this drawing again. And I'm going to leave it up here and you can just look at it and stuff and see the drawing that I had done. And I made the leaves a little bit different. This one also kind of like a bullseye. It's like a daisy in a, in, a, in a circle. And we don't want a circle plant. It just doesn't have any dimension to it. So we want to put dimension on this one. So I will make these leaves light and dark and I'll make them the tops of them light. And I'll try to figure out how I can get this light looking like it's going through there. And the really greatest thing about this, this photo is that the sun is just shining through the, those blossoms. And this, it's, it's not bad. It's not the worst I've ever done. But it's not what I wanted, <laughs> and we were struggling quite uh, quite um, uh, um, all class. I was struggling to try, try to make this thing something, and I still didn't make it cool, great. But that's all I, that's all the time I had for that. So we're gonna see if we can make it a little bit better. All right, so let's get started here. And there, let's see who else is here. And boy, a lot more people than I thought are gonna be here tonight, being the holiday weekend coming up. And um, so hey, Anne, hey Barbara, hey Carol, Monica. Evelyn, Kathy, Sue, Barbie, Paula, thanks all for dropping by. It's really, I'm really happy when you guys, um, and actually when you do the things too, thanks a lot for doing Oh, here you, here you see my, here's my wreck and look at how dark this um, puddle is. I mean, it's supposed to be super, super light. Look at up there, how light this is. And so I just, maybe I wasn't with it this afternoon. Maybe I need another drink. Okay, so here you go. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Here's to um, a, a better painting. And okay, let's go and put that aside and we're going to look at that and just see what not to do. And so here's my new set of brushes. And actually, I also have, look at this brush. I have this um, uh, strip, striper, I think, striper they call them, or dragon tongue, or it's a brush that's really long. And I think for the branches, it could be really cool. And so again, this is a Holbein Gold brush, same maker of the brushes that make my brushes. But hopefully in time, I will have all of them, every single one of them to... Um, that you don't have to go looking like at, at Blix and stuff. Cause a lot of, it's hard to find these brushes online. And so um, I will probably have them all. I will have every single one of them. All right, so where do we start? <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the effect that I usually do when I, um, uh, when I do a wet into wet, where I'm gonna wet the whole thing and I'm gonna kind of go in here or should I? Mm. <laughs> oh boy, I'm kind of scared at this one. <laughs> I want to really make this one look great. I mean, this is a nice, really nice. So let's go into trying to get the sunlight in here. So I'm gonna go through everything here where the sun is and kind of get the sun. That the little bit of, I'm gonna make it, and you notice I cleaned my palette because it was a, it was a mess. It was like a total mess when I got done this afternoon in Libertyville. And so this Friday, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing demonstrating at the Starline Gallery in Harvard. So if you're in that area, just drop on by. It is a $10 fee to get in to see this show, but they have bands and they have um, music and they have um, all kinds of artists have their studios and stuff. Now, I know I started with orange, um, but I'm going to put pink in there right away. I'm going to put a little pink in there. And I'm going to make this a hard edge. Maybe I should make it a hard edge. Hold on. I just got to make sure I keep this white right there. And I'm really worried about trying to make this sunlight really pop through there because I really like that effect that it is. Actually, it's up here. What am I doing way down there? So let me just get a little more. I want to get, I wish they had a color called, and actually got to make it um, like salmon, like a salmon-y color. So I'm going to make the sun right here. Let's just make it right there. So we'll make the sun. Worry about the sun. It is important that you make the sun look like it's bright right there. Maybe a little bit more yellow this time instead of orange. Yellow is probably better. And so I will, I'm going to wet it as I go along here. I'm going to wet it so I get the soft edge. Making sure that I keep that white. That's going to be the only white, the whitest white right there. You always got to do that when you're doing this sun effect. Where I call it um, scattered. Uh, what is it called? Um, optical scatter is what um, they call it. Actually, the one artist that I taught, um, Carl Bretzky, taught me that. 
that name. I think he made it up, but it's a great name for this um, to make it look like it's just these branches are going to be the same color, red, and even it's burnt through the branch in the, in the, in the photo. It's like burnt through there. So we're going to just get that in there real quick. And the sky itself is white, so I'm going to keep it white or lighter. And maybe it's got a little bit of yellow in it, so I'm just going to put a little yellow. And then this is going to be dark, and so I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to go over here and try to get the sky and the lighting in the background done. And again, I'm going to try to go more pink. Try to go more pink this time. But don't go too dark. That's what happened was I went too dark in the first thing here. And so let's just go right into our... Um, let's go right into doing the dark right away. I'm not going to mess around because I want soft edges back here. So I'm going to go right away with my darks. And I'm going to try to make the darks not so colorful because I want to keep this flower or the blossom. I keep on saying flower. It's a blossom. I want to make the petals. I want to make the petals very pastel-like. And if I start putting really bright colors here, that's not going to make those colors stand out. And so don't be afraid of gray colors. You know, I'm going to go in here and get some darker colors. And they don't have to all be vibrant colors. You know, you don't always have to use vibrant colors to make the uh, make the plant stick out. And so I'm going to go back here and make make my soft edges. And it's wet now, and I'm just going to go make some soft edge things that are back there, like what it is. You know, I'm just going to kind of almost follow it this time. I, I you know, usually don't follow the colors of something, but hey, you know, this time I can possibly do that. So I'm, I can switch off a little bit, but I want to make it gray. And this is a good example of using a limited palette too. I don't want to go crazy with the colors all so that I'm having everything happen like this. Look at all these colors in here. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. I want to kind of really bring out this flower this time. You know, it's always good to do a second painting. I mean, it's like, I'm so happy I have that class. And I know they, they feel like guinea pigs, which they are. They're guinea pigs for me <laughs> to, make, to do the right thing. And so um, let's see how we get this a little bit better this time. And so I'm coming down here. I'm going to get it really dark right away. Kind of go through here and get these darks because these are soft edge darks. And so the only way to get soft edges is how wet your surface, wet the surface of your paper. And that's how you get soft edges. Only way. I mean, you can rub it and scrub it, but why? I mean, these my, oh boy, these brushes are so sharp now, these brand new brushes. And um, I posted a few, a few things about my brushes that I got a bunch of sets in um, of my brushes, not of the other brushes yet. But um, a bunch of people had ordered. So thanks a lot for ordering. So we're going to come down here and now we're going to not do it as dark as I want yet because I'm still trying to just get the middle tones. I'm not going my darkest, darkest, though I did do the darkest, dark right there. But as I come down, the branch right here is lighter than the background, so I can negative paint that later. Negative painting meaning you're painting around the surface, around the area that you want. I see somebody has a question. Hey, Paula, um, thanks for teaching us how to look at our paintings when we mess up and how to fix them for next time. Composition, color choices, and figuring that out is such a learning curve for me. It is, I mean, for everybody. I mean, you know, the, the best intentions sometimes don't work because you have an idea. I had an idea in my head that I wanted to use those colors and I thought that would work, but sometimes it just doesn't do it until you get actually painting. It all sounds good in your head when I was doing it, when I first started, <laughs> but then I look at the outcome, I'm like, oh boy, that, doesn't, that didn't work at all. And so, yeah, it's it's... It's fine to mess up, I guess you could say. It's fine to do that because it only helps you learn more when you go on. So already this t ten, is 10,000 times better than what I had done. I mean, look at these nice soft edges back there in the distance. And I'll put a little bit of yellowish um, pink back in there. So it looks like it's hitting off the edge of the, of the um, kind of like the photo. You know, so I, like I said, I normally don't copy the photo to a T. But this time it is so nice. I like that softness to it. So go ahead with it. You can copy it. I mean, that's what is really popular right now is to do hyper-realism and they do it to copy the actual photograph. It's not a bad thing. You know, it's some people like that. Some people don't. Or they can't stand, like myself, I cannot stand sitting at the painting for hours and hours and hours on end. So I like to get it done fast and now. I just could never, um, I don't have the patience to do that kind of painting. Not a bad kind of way of doing it, but it's just, you know, it's a it's a way that I can I can't do that. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna um, go into this area, and now I'm gonna I'm not gonna make my darkest dark. I'm gonna just make the color of the branches, 
So maybe a little bit of warmth, a little bit of orange I'm using here, brilliant orange. Um, so I'm basically going in there, getting the color of the, of the branch because that's gonna be darker behind it uh, later on. And so now let's go into our flower right away, our blossom, our flowering blossom. And let's get the colors that I wanna use in there. And up here it's darker, so I can go right away. And I'm just going to try to go right away and get the exact colors I want. Exact values I want and colors. And I know this is the darker part of this flower, but since the background is light, why not just go right in there and get it done? And as I go down, I can't get that look. Um, well, I'm going to try to get that look of where the sun is right, kind of coming through the leaf. So the blossom, I mean. Uh, so I'm looking up at the picture, so... I'm not staring at you guys. I'm just <laughs> looking at my picture. <laughs> and so um, let's see. We got this kind of bluish here. And this petal, um, I'm going to try to get a little bit more of the yellow in there because the yellow is shining through. The sun is so vibrant that a little that's going through. I'm going to try to make that more pinkish yellow instead of the orange because that's what I was going for this afternoon. And it did not work with the, with the orange. So I'm going to go with the yellowish yellowish pink and that will make a, a salmon color which is a great color I wish they had it in a tube salmon color so see I'm just making it bright right there and so it's going to look a little bit brighter now so that's cool and I will not get my darkest darks of the flower yet that'll come in afterwards though I do want to get it um like up there where it is going to be stay like that then yeah I want to get that right away now over here where it's wet and I don't want to have a um hard edge then you can go into that area. If you want a hard edge, you gotta wait for it to dry. But I don't need to have a hard edge, so I'm just gonna go around there. Let's go right in. I just kind of. So on Monday this week, I'm, I'm driving to um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and to Detroit. That's where I'm gonna be um, teaching a workshop next week. I have a workshop. So the next week's workshop or paint along will be from my probably hotel, or maybe I'm gonna ask them if I can do it from the gallery where I'm teaching. Maybe I'll do it there if they can do that, but we will still have the paint along, but it'll be from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Or let's see, Thursday night, because there's something going on, I think on Thursday night there. So maybe I gotta ask them again, because it may be a late thing. And so I may have to, I may have to, still have to find out. So check my newsletter. And you'll see if we're doing one or if a different day. I know I've got to drive to Detroit and there's a, going to be a show that the, um, the Michigan Water Society put on and I judged. And let's see where, so I'm putting the light areas now down here because I wanted to make it look like the sun is coming through there. So again, I'm going to have to clean this area here. So I want to make yellow and pink. If you don't have a pink, just take your Scarlet Lake or your red and mix white with it. You get yourself a pink. And then the pink can be part of the outer edge here. And again, this is the light parts of this flower. I want to keep it light. Hey, Pamela from Wheaton. It's never too late. <laughs> hey, Liz. Thanks for making it. So, okay, I'm going to keep the edges a little white. And so I'm just gonna see how a different shape now too. It's gonna be more like these petals are I mean popping forward, and we're gonna try to keep that where the edges are um, a little bit different and lit, lit up. And so I got uh, some dimension in this flower this time instead of having it be like round. And round doesn't work. I mean it just doesn't work that way that well. So seeing that this flower is or this petal, uh, these petals are not really in the photograph. So you kind of kind of look at these and think of, okay, how would it work? You know, so these over here would be a little bit lighter. So I made these up, but just follow what you did over here. You know, the, this one will be lightest, right? This one right here, closer to the sun will be the lightest. And as it goes away, it'll be like darker. And now this area down here will also be like this area down here. So I'm gonna keep a little white of the edges. And then I'm not gonna make them as, as orange and yellow. Uh, not orange, but yellow and pink. I'm just going to go in this way. And I erased pretty hard in this paper because I redid the drawing. And so I may have ruined the paper a little bit, but you won't be able to see that because I'm working wet in the wet. And, and now this, these petals are in front. Those are behind. So I just drew up a, a bunch of petals that, you know, and if you, if you don't know how to draw that and you need a um, reference, just 
go to Google Images and find them. You can just, you know, type in or any of those pixels or pixels.com or uh, Pixel Bay, all over where you get those free images. Um, just go there and you can just find them. Thanks, Linda. Uh, you like my colors of this work? This is, I like the colors already much better. <laughs> much, much better than the last one. And for anybody who's late coming in, uh, this is my first attempt. And um, pretty disastrous, but um, a good learning curve. And I just read in an article, um, it was an email article from the um, Artist Magazine, I think, about how, you know, taking and doing a couple of the same image to make the image, you know, getting better at it, which is something that a lot of artists do. You know, it's uh, good to sometimes just do a little st a study. Let's say I wanted to do this really big. You just do smaller studies first and just figure it out. Sometimes you just have to figure things out before you can get in there and do the big, the real one. All right, and so there's that light, 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 light. I got that light. And then um, I'm gonna be wetting this and so I can get my dark darks. But I still have to go in here and get my medium things for my, for the branches and for the branches that are coming through here. I'm gonna put a kind of a warm, uh, let's do more of a red, purple. I'm going to go in here and these are going to be the, the um, light areas of these branches and I actually put an extra branch in here too because see how I moved the flower up and because this the flower in the picture right here is the whole thing and, I, and that just you know it's like bullseye right in the center there and so I offset it a little bit and then I put this flowering bud right down at the bottom so it just has something to work off of because it was just not a great composition like that so look at your look at your work and kind of make it you know and if it doesn't work the first time study it and think why did it not work out and I, I just didn't even realize i was thinking wait this is like a bullseye and it just looked like a round flat you know image looking straight at it you know and you don't want that and so that so we changed it and that's one thing you have to do you have to change things if and um, if you're not good at drawing you know and you have to find it then find another picture <laughs> or if you can't change it you have to change it i mean you can't paint it like that because it's just not the composition is not that great so learn how to change it or find another picture or go out and if you have um, a magnolia tree go out there and take a bunch of pictures and find the one that's best fits you fits the purpose of what you're painting so i'm making this this is again my medium tones i put a little bit of warmth on the, on the edges like the sun's hitting that side it's a little bit of that and this is all getting ready for the really dark darks in here so i'll put the darks in there and that'll be the background right so that's cool That'd be great this time. Make this a little bit darker, this branch. I also could put a bud right here, some petals, just because I thought it'd be nice, because this is like an empty hole here. And so I just put that in there too, and right here. All right, and so here we go. Now we go to darks. So you see what I mean about, actually let's put, let's put these branches in here right from the get go, because they'll, they'll be like the orange and and pink, not the orange, yellow. I keep on forgetting, yellow and pink. And what I'm gonna do is right where the sun is, they're gonna be burnt out. That optical scatter I talk about, they're gonna be burnt out so much that they just look like they're red because it's what it, it does. And even these petals will have a little bit of that orange and really bright color in it. And actually you can put some really bright yellow right there because it's burning, burning right through that branch. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, it just goes to a dark right away because then the sun's right away, um, not hitting right in front of it. And so the optical scatter doesn't work then back here. It'll go right to a nice dark color. And so I'll use my brownish, the mid is alone brown. And I'll put this like a kind of a purple brown. I'll make it really dark. So you go from a really dark, dark branch. And then you, when you get to the sun, you make sure you get that optical scatter happening and then just start using reds and oranges and pinks and whatever color that's right by the sun. See, these will just be really bright and it'll look like it's burning, like it's so bright. And that's where you get that nice color effect, the nice um, sun effect, I mean, the light effect. We love to get uh, really cool lighting effects. People always will look at your painting and go, oh my gosh, it looks like the sun is really bright. And that's what I want. I want people to look at it and go, wow, that's amazing. How, how did you get that? And it's actually not that hard. It's just that you have to figure out the colors and the lighting right there. So that's pretty light area. Now I will probably have to erase the lines because the lines, you know, the pencil lines 
here would kind of affect it more than like other places I don't mind having a pencil line but that's going to affect the look of the brightness in there so then take away those pencil lines if you can that's one time I do take them away normally I don't like to take them away because I think it makes it look more realistic and like a watercolor I want my paintings to look like a watercolor and not like a photo I want it to look like a watercolor and having those pencil lines in there sometimes really makes it look like a, a watercolor all right and that's this branch right here that we'll do this branch this I brought down a little bit farther. It was one right sticking out of there, but I didn't like how they were all lined up one on top of each other. So I made this one a little bit different. Again, those are things that you have to look for. Look for tangents, look for things that are out of place that doesn't balance right. Always look for balance in your painting. You know, it's like, if, is it everything weighed to one side or the other? Those are things you gotta look for. Any questions? Uh, that's all right, Maura. You know, it's uh, never too late. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. You know, a lot of people are getting ready for the weekend, for the holiday weekend. So I think in my class on Saturday, there's probably going to be nobody there. <laughs> but we'll see. All right, so I feel like I'm... Where's my... Oh, I don't bring my sprayer. Darn it. I don't have my sprayer over here. It's in my thing. Okay, so we're just going to have to fake the spray. Because like the sprayer would be really good here to wet this area so I can get a soft edge. Because it's gonna be a soft edge, so I'm just gonna take my brush and really lightly go over a little bit farther with clean water where, to where I'm gonna go. And so now that's wet, and hopefully it will stay um, so it doesn't make a line there. Because I don't want a line, but I do want the edge of this, whatever the background is, I do want to have an edge, a soft edge though. I don't want a hard edge, I want a soft edge. And so it's gonna start out with this little red, pink, 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 pink to then this gray. And I'm gonna go right to the gray, and I'm gonna use the gray. Use the gray. I'm using a lot of violet. I'm using like lavender, permanent violet, and then to mix a little orange with that, I'll give it kind of a brownish. That's too brown. Let's go with more of a. What can I put in there? Gray, more of a blue. Blue with the violet. There we go. And then make it pretty thick, and so that it'll stay. It won't. The thicker the, the thicker the paint, the less it's gonna bleed all around. I need a little black in there too. What the heck? Put black in there. That'll make it dark, right? <laughs> but there's a glow of orangey yellow there, so don't be afraid of putting that in a little bit. I did too much of that in my last painting, so I'm going to try to go right away to a, more of a purple. It was just too. It went too long. The 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 um, warmth, and then it should go to cool because this background. I want the flower to be warmer, and then the background to be cooler. So. I'll stick there then and get a more of a cool color, which is blue. And this blue has a lot. Of, oh, that's that's peacock. That's not, that's too green. Well, we can maybe do a little green in there. Let's go back to our pink and let's put some pink right here. And also by doing these darks now, I'm going to cut around the shapes of the petals, which is negative painting, and that's how you get the shape of the petals. And and so I will start put a little bit of this with this gray green here. And I like using my round brush for this because I can look at how sharp a um, point I can get right in there. And I can go right through here. And as I go down, I call this wetting as you go along. Like I don't wet the whole paper, I just wet as I go along. I wet it so it is wet in the wet. It's still going to be that kind of um, way of painting, wet in the wet. But it's as you go along. And you can just things and darker. And so if I wet the whole thing, I would never get to this area and then time. To get that stuff. Ooh, that's dark. Yeah, that's okay. We'll start with really dark and then add to that. We'll add the purple to it and it will always get, it's easier to make things lighter and then making things darker later um, and give it that fresh look. See, I can just push the, some of the pigment around and it's going to be dry 20% lighter anyway. So have fun with that and don't be so scared of making it too dark. Most, I would say, most of the students don't make it dark enough. And it's because you're not using enough pigment. So it's one of the bigger problems is to make sure that you get enough of the pigment in there than um, making it dark enough. So that's how you make it dark. Lots of pigment. And I will put the little, like maybe little leaves back here into the softness. going to be soft and just going to be like little, little things in there. And that's something you learn. And I'm actually, um, I mean, hopefully somebody's signed up for my um, Dillman's. I'm doing Dillman's in June. After I get back from um, Detroit, I'm going to um, have a week off, and then I go right up to Dillman's, which I'll have two. I'll have, um, at Dillman's, I'll have the acrylic class. We don't have to bring anything. I bring all the supplies, which
which is really kind of cool because you don't have to bring anything, just yourself. And um, we have fun. I teach you how to work watercolor and acrylic because it's, it's an acrylic class, but I teach a lot of um, watercolor techniques with the acrylics. So it's like two classes in one, watercolor and and um, acrylics techniques. It is all acrylic paints, but we use three, four different kinds of acrylic, maybe just three, because uh, liquid, fluid, and um, ink are very close. And so a lot of times I just bring uh, one ink. It's, yeah, it's really, it's almost like watercolor, but the fluids, you just mix a little bit of water and it becomes ink. And so, um, so see how nice and dark that got. And you don't have to put that much color in here. I'm just going in, it's wet. And once it's wet, you can always make sure that you don't put more water than it's down. Because you put more water than it's down on the paper, that's when you get your watermarks. But I should level it up a little bit and so I can actually get some things dripping in here. It's kind of fun to drip a little bit of maybe warmth in there. It can give me those little fingers. You know, it's always fun to get those little fingers that drip through when it's wet. Learn your medium. Learn how to really get the most out of it. The most you can get out of it. That's that's what you want. Be able to just see. I'm putting a light on top of a dark, but it's not so light, and it's just it's going to be resting in there. It's going to push away some of the dark, and it's going to it's a little bit lighter gray because I have white in this um, lavender. And that's fine. It'll be fine to have that there. All right, so as we go down here, I'm going to get a little bit more of the green again. So I'm mixing peacock blue with my purple and black. And again, I do have some black in here, but that's okay. You know, people are like, wow, there's no color in there. But I'm putting it with color, so then it's like not that way. It's not just black. And so we're going to go in here. See, now this is dry, so I can get a hard edge. I can get the hard edge. And then I wet it as I go along. It's okay to get these hard edges. I mean, I want these to stick out. And if I do want some soft edges, I can always go over them later too. It's, it, you can soften an edge. Um, what I want to make sure is that I make things look really clean. Like one wash and you're out of there. Like, I don't want to go back into this area now. That's done. Um, if, if, I, if I feel I do need to put something in there, like if I need to get some more warmth in there, I, I would do it now. But now I lost the... Um, I lost the sheen, so that means it would give me a watermark because there'd be too much water there. But afterwards, I could spray it with the sprayer, with the mister, and I could just put a little bit of the yellow over that, right over the top of the dark. As long as it's as long as it's floating, it's always about floating your pigment. Boy, this paper, I really rubbed it because it's like sinking in. This is, um, I must have really <laughs> damaged the paper from throwing it. But if you use enough water and you just let it float, you're gonna be good. And so I'm going to put a little bit of um, negative painting. Negative painting is I'm going around this edge. Now, remember that first wash I put in there, I made it a color that I thought was the color of the, of the branch, which it is. And now I'll go in there and get the dark parts of that branch then too. It was just the medium tone of the branch. But now I'm going to go in here and get some nice darks in there, a blue, and kind of mix, mix it up to match that area. Because when you're working on this side, let's say I put a little dark right there, then right away put it on this side so you get the same thing so it looks like it goes behind it. Otherwise... You get a look of like there's a wall right there and something different happening. So always make sure that your your sides of a flower or a branch that you don't do it this same colors on both sides of the branches. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. And so I'm just wetting it now with any color. See, I'm just nice grays. Don't be afraid of grays. Try some grays. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. This is not bad. What did I call it? Nine and a half? It was nine and a half. That's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. And so we're going to go in here now. I'm going to put some background stuff in here, like a little bit, maybe a little bit of this orangey pink. Maybe there's something back here that's hitting it a little bit. So you get a little bit of a, an effect, like, oh, look at that. Look at that little thing. There's something happening back there. See? There's a little branch, maybe. And it doesn't have to be anything in particular. It just could be a little change of light change of um, color just so that it looks like something's happening in here instead of just a plain flat wall back there which it wouldn't be I mean there's always things happening all around this painting here and now this I can keep this is kind of wet but I'm kind of glad it's wet because then it'll give me soft edges branch branch is coming up 
Boy, you guys are really quiet today. <laughs> That's asking much. Must be mesmerized. <laughs> when I do a bummer painting, I usually try working really hard to make sure it looks better the, the second time around. Because, I mean, it really helps to do one painting first and see what you did wrong. And I mean, it's, um, it's super great to do that. It helps out a lot because I don't care how good you are. I mean, if you're just um, doing a fast painting, a little sketch like this, you know, there's a lot of mistakes you can make or colors that you didn't kind of put in. You didn't, didn't kind of do a little study, a, a color study. A lot of people do color studies too, you know, or they do value studies, which I don't make you guys do, which you probably should be doing is value studies because it really helps out the, the whole composition. You know, doing value studies is a good thing. So don't ever... You know, if you feel like you're um, having problems, do a value study first, or even like a little sketch. I know like Andy Evenson does gray sketches, like with gray markers or with the gray um, paint. He just uses black and then puts some um, water on it and just makes his grays that way. So a little bit more of the green through here. Now this branch, I want to be some of it to be soft edge. So what I'll do is I'll wet it a little bit here so that the whole branch is not hard all the way everywhere. So then, you know, getting soft and hard edges is a good thing. Not everything should, like even this plant later on, this petal right over here, I don't want to make it so hard edge, but I can do that later when I'm doing the darks of this of this plant. Because you see how, this is the color of the reflected light going through them. So I still have a darker dark to put over that. Same thing with this flower. This is not the darkest dark of that yet. I'm going to put a little bit of that so I can get that looking like this colors are the color of the light that's shining through there. All right, so this I kind of left that way. So let me just take some clean water, which is trying to get not that clean. But what I'm going to do is go up to about here. Okay, so I wet that area first. I wet it so that I can then now plop stuff in there and um, get soft edges because I don't want any hard edges back there. I want it all soft edges and then I will put a dark edge um, of the branch right through that. How are we looking at time? Oh, we got plenty of time. All right, so let me think. Let me get some warmth in this area like the sun shining right through that area. Let's get some pink. So here, make it a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter. Not so um, dark, dark. I'm just gonna go around my petals. Okay, it's an eye. Let's see. And then this is supposed to be a, a blossom in the background that's soft edge. So I'm gonna wet it and then just try to make a soft edge around that area. I'm just gonna leave it like that. Um, what color was it? It was a little bit. I should follow this color, so that was maybe a little bit of green I was making. And so we're gonna go like this. Go through there. All right, and then we're gonna go up and make some of these branches that are in the distance. But they can still be soft edged. See how they're still soft edged? Because I wet that area, remember? I just wet it a second ago. So I can work those things in there with a lot of pigment. Brush it off in your towel. I just bought, I just went to Goodwill this afternoon and got another towel, another white towel, dollar ninety nine. Can't beat it, dollar ninety nine for this huge towel, a white towel. And when I, I've been finding that um, even though I bleach them and stuff, they still have a little bit of, um, they don't get totally white again. I probably have to do that in like a bucket of bleach and stuff if I want them totally white. I still have to do the. Um, I still want to do the video of the waxing your paint, your watercolors. I'm still going to do that. I still haven't had much time to do that, but I will be doing that um, sometime in the future. How to wax it instead of using glass and uh, make it more like an oil painting and sit there and um, make um, your painting, your wax, your wax the surface so you don't have to put glass in front of it. So that'll still be coming. I just haven't had much time lately. And so I'm getting ready for all my workshops, the Dillman's this next weekend, we got the workshop and then um, my demonstration tomorrow night. And then on June 10th, if you, um, if you want to um, come watch me do uh, gouache, um, go to my website. I, 
spoil but did I put that on there yet? <laughs> June 10th I'm doing a for um for a society. Where is that society from? I can't think now. Oh it's for an art store. It's for an art store. Opus art store I think. And I'm doing a um a Zoom actually you gotta sign up for it. A Zoom demonstration on gouache. So that's June tenth I was and again I'll put it on my website I think I forgot to put it on my website because it was just um, kind of announced. So I got to figure that out and put it on there. So if you want to join me um, for that night, I'm doing gouache though. I'm not doing um, watercolor. It's going to be gouache. Which is kind of a neat thing sometimes too. But make it thick. Make it thick watercolor. All right. So I think that's my background. That's my background. And I've got it dark. And now let's work on making this um, petal look like what it's supposed to look like <laughs> this time. And then I have to wait for this to dry to get my branches in there. And then I'm going to start on the petals over here. Work my way to my good one. And so if I practice on these, maybe I'll get them right. And so that when I get to here, they'll be perfect. <laughs> so let's go in here and make it a little bit darker. Not super dark. I mean, just darker than what you have there to identify the, you know, what, what petals in front of which one of the other one. Here. And then also it'll show lighting. It'll show like where's the light hitting and what's going shining through because there's a lot of shining through on the on these petals where it shines through and that's very cool. That's um, the look of it is really neat when it makes it look like it's it's so thin that it's shining through that and all it is is a light. It's the color I put down first, right? So I'm going to do this right here and then just leave those spots where I left that I colored before. Just leave them alone and it'll look like it's shining through. I hope. <laughs> Let's just hope that happens. <laughs> and so this one, I'm going to go a little bit darker on the bottom here and put a little warmth in there too. Any questions, guys? You're very quiet today. You must all be drinking your own beers today. <laughs> so I'm going here. And so let's just make this a little bit darker right here. So we're going to make it look like it's shining through there a little bit. So when you're looking at the picture, you just see there's just small amounts on the edges. So I'm just making little small lights on the edges. And this anyways, I don't want to give too much detail to, too much attention to. So I'm going to um, try to just keep it really low key over here. And then this one over here, let's just do these. And these are, I just put them in. So you do the same thing that you did on that one because there's nothing to look at. So you just got to do what you see in the in the big one and just kind of what you already see in the picture and just use that. And so let's see, let me put this a little here. It's mostly that like you put a little light on the edges. And then some darker with violets. I'm going with violet because I don't want to get anything from the background into this light area. I just want them to all be these beautiful colors pastel colors and take my paper towel again and wipe an area so I can get some really fresh lavenders really fresh light light beautiful colors in this because again I don't want them like the background because the background is separate I want to keep them back and so I'm gonna go with more like let's let's clean out my pink here put a little pink up there put a little yellow in that pink and make it more vibrant and so I'm gonna go in there with some pink you know that's one thing about you know people are scared of using white but you know, pink is just red and white uh, mixed together to make a pink. So don't be scared of using white because you need to have some white in your palette to get some color pastel -y colors. And this this picture definitely calls for pastel colors. I mean, it's very subtle, these petals, and they have like this violet lavender right through there and it overcrosses where the light is. See, I'm just going to put a little light there and um, kind of just figure out where the dark parts are where it's not shining through. Take a little bit of lavender, maybe a little bit of purple, make it a little bit darker. And then this one's in front, so I'll make that one darker behind it. Anything behind it is gonna be a little bit darker, but then keeping the light. And we'll see if I can get it, you know. I'm not saying that I can get it, <laughs> but we're gonna try. <laughs> a little bit better than what we did. Here, I'm putting a little bit really dark, dark right here. Right in the center, there's a really dark darks in there. So I'm just going to push those a little really far back. I'm going to push them way in the distance, back of the flower. And that'll give me some more dimension. 
I want to get to mention in this and not just have it a circle. It's not like a daisy where there's there's petals all the way around. There's some in front, some behind, and you got to give that look by making some in the front shadow, shadow the ones in the back. Like this petal will put a shadow on the one behind it because the sun's going this direction, so there's going to be a little shadow right there. And also, I mean, it's a little tough, tricky to make it look like it's shining through it. I mean, I'm even having a hard time to make it look like it's shining through the actual image. But I think it's just like here, the branch, what you can do is it make the branch look like it's behind here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a little bit of the um, lavender that's almost the same color that's there to make it look like the branch actually is going right behind. So that's so thin that you can actually see the branch through the petal. Okay, you know, and the funny thing is I'm saying, you know, about these colors and really this color is very, very gray. There's a lot of grays in here. There's a lot of colors that um, I was trying to push the colors too far because you can do that. You can push the colors way too far sometimes, especially if you're um, wanting to be subtle. Subtle changes is uh, make it subtle. These don't have to be super contrasty. I don't want them super contrasty because I still want it to be the light. And so I can't put a really dark dark in here Otherwise, I lose the fact that this is a light blossom. But you just have to go a little bit darker, and that's enough. Enough to show that this is going to be the light area, and a colorful area, too. And don't be afraid of putting pink on top of the dark. You know, I, when I was in this school and at the American Academy, we never used pastel colors. It was almost like a no-no because it was white, and it was opaque. Yes, they are opaque. The colors are opaque. But if you use them wet into wet, they aren't opaque because you're floating them. You're floating them, and that's the, that's the reason I have you float them, so that they don't look opaque. You put down the wash, and then you just go in, and you make it nice and colorful, nice and beautiful, with beautiful lavenders and pinks and pastel -y colors. Now, should these petals be lighter in the front and then... Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> it's a made up thing. So do I make these petals in the front darker or make the ones behind darker? One or the other. So I'm gonna make the ones behind a little bit darker like you're looking into the flower. So I'm gonna make this a little bit darker, let those pop out and then we'll put a, maybe a dark on the outer edge of this. Again, very light and when I say dark, not dark like the background, just darker for the petals. Oh, there's a train. You can hear the train, right? <laughs> Somebody likes to listen to the train. You can hear it in the background. The, the, seven, the 715 just went by. <laughs> and so let's see this part right here. I kind of like to have some parts just leave them, leave them nice and loose. So I'm going to wet this whole petal right here and then just do like a, a little wash in there making soft edged. I can put hits of super dark in there, but not yet. I'll just wait for that. So I said this going to be a little bit darker in here, but maybe farther away right here. Let's see. So by putting it dark right in there, it looks like it goes into the flower. Bring it up a little bit, make these petals come forward by making it dark behind but still leaving that orangey pink back there, or yellowy pink. I wish that's how they named some of the colors because like, don't give it these, these really hard names. Just give it, there's a yellow, there's an orange, there's a yellow orange, there's a red orange, there's a, <laughs> a pinkish yellow. You know, that should be the color, the names of the colors. It's a lot easier to understand what they are. Also, it'll be easier for teaching. How much time do we have left? Oh, we got 10 minutes. I think we got this looking much better than the first one. That's all I was happy. That's all I really want to do. But see now how these come forward and that goes back. And it doesn't have the same effect maybe of the light um, shining through it. But um, you don't need it on everyone. Or maybe I maybe see if it, maybe I can put like a little little line through there. And then put a branch. There's going to be a branch right here. And so the branch will be coming through there. Now this is not, boy, I, I just realized now I use 
I'm finally, they finally, um, Stonehenge finally has gotten the paper. So I've got a paper coming, a 300 pound paper coming. This is 140. And it, you can't tell it, but it is wrinkling. Let's see, can I show you how wrinkled it is? See how wrinkled it is? Or, um, because 140, I normally don't like working with 140, and that's coming scrubbed out too. It's not as tough as the 300 pound. The 300 pound is a little bit more, you know, give you a little bit more oomph. <laughs> All right, so now my dark darks. And so I'm gonna take my small round brush and look at how sharp that thing is. But you can cut yourself with that brush. It's so nice having the new brushes. Uh, I mean, other brushes are okay, and I'm still gonna use them for like not so um, detailed in the area. But um, boy, the point on these things—you can go right in there and get such nice point down there now. I'm gonna go a little bit darker with the um, with the branches now. Take these branches and make them nice and dark. And when I get to this area here, it's going to be wet. So that's going to give me a soft edge. It's still wet. And then up here. And um, since it is wet, I just have to use more pigment. So I'm going to use no water in my brush and use all nothing but pigment. And it'll just sit right there. So it's very thick. And that's fine to do. Nobody's going to say anything. It's going to work out nicely for you. And go right down here and make the dark side of this, some of the, the branches. I'm also going to make some of these branches kind of grayish. And to get a gray, you just mix your complements. Mix like violet and yellow. Look at a nice gray. So kind of a warm gray. Just going to go in here and put it right on top of that a little bit. Again, don't be afraid of getting too much um, pigment in your thing. I, it's a lot easier later on to get away from that than it is to keep on getting darker. It, I'm just so want students to just use enough paint. It's so important to use enough paint. I'd rather use more paint than not enough. If it's a one-shot deal, then it works so much better when, when you're doing the one-shot deal, putting something down and leaving it. And it can be thick, almost like um, gouache. That's how I actually learned how to do watercolor correctly, is by using gouache, because then it would make me use enough paint. I mean, because I'm using it so thick, it is actually thick paint. Here, I'm going to put that branch right there. And it also helps you to work in a wet wash, because then you're not bleeding all over the place, right? Maybe we need to paint trains more often. We did one train one time. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's get some more lavender, thick lavender. My wet lavender is really wet here, so I'm gonna pick on the side here, make it nice and thick in the water. Because I'm using it really thick, but once it hits the water, then it's like adding water to it, right? So you're not using it so thick, because you're using it in water and then that's where you add the water when you're on your painting because the painting has water on it and so it doesn't it's not like opaque then because you're dipping it into water and that's where it's spreading out then on its own i'm gonna put a couple branches up here that are not as dark just to give it kind of a, a nice look and then this branches i didn't finish and so i'm gonna give that a little lavender look here before it hits the orange and then there's this light branch here and um, it's supposed to be light so let me show you how to wipe out a branch so to wiping out a lot of times I use my flat brush like my half inch flat brush I wet it and then I pull on the side like I rip it back and forth because look at how sharp this thing is it's so sharp and so what I do is I just wet the surface and I just pull it out see I'm just pulling out the, the, the stems I'm just wetting it and just it comes right off. Now, if you're using a, a paper like Arches that absorbs too much, then you can't do this because it absorbs into the paper too far and then you can't go back to the white of the paper because it's inside the paper and here it's on top of the paper. It's not going into the paper as much as like an Arches. Both have good points and bad points or not, they're not bad points, they're just different ways of working the papers. So see how that looks like it's going through there. And then we're gonna keep it going through this area like it's like it's behind there and then just bring it out over here and attach to this branch right here. And I'm getting a little crazy here though. <laughs> Let's put another one right here. And I'm just gonna let them bleed into nothingness. All right, I think the only thing I have left to do is this branch right here and then some finely detailed stuff right in the center here for that um, See, there's some really dark darks in there I want to get. But I have to wait for that to dry. Oh, I didn't do that. That blossom either. How much time do I have? Five minutes. Or actually, six minutes. 
Let's get in here and get this nicely wet. Ooh. Let's brush that off a little bit. This one over here. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we don't have a picture of that. I'm making that one up. That's one thing about if you're making it up, you have nothing to look at. You just have to kind of wing it. So learn how to wing it. You know, that's another thing. The more you do, the more painting you do, you start learning how to wing it. How to, um, now I have to look at the picture all the time and you just use your imagination and make things up out of your imagination. So important for artists to do that. You learn so much when you, when you mix it up sometimes. There, nice dark right here for the for the stem. Look at that nice dark in there. Isn't that great? A little black in there. Like a nice and dark branch. Same thing up here. Really nice dark. It comes right up in that area. I put a little bit of the yellow. I noticed I don't have enough yellow on this side of the painting. So on the branches, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow. Nice bright yellow pink. And just hit the sides of the of the branches here so that it has that the sunlight shining through there and just getting some of that really nice and some that color over here. And this blossom can have some of that color. Much better. And I know it is limited palette. It's a little bit more limited palette, but hey, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. Limiting your palette sometimes. Okay, last thing right here, and we'll have a couple more minutes left. So if you have any more questions. Now's the time. If this is challenging to you, imagine how hard it is for some of us. <laughs> it looks like a simple subject, but not with that illumination and positive negative painting. Yep, that's what I thought too. And <laughs> I went into class thinking this is going to be the easiest thing we've ever done. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, um, it's not as easy as it looks. So um, you're absolutely right, Anne. <laughs> I thought, I really did, I thought this was going to be one of the easiest ones I've ever done and it actually ends up being one of the hardest ones I think I've ever done in class. And I, you can tell because I totally screwed it up. <laughs> so give yourself time, watch it, watch it again. And, um, you know, just, it's a good exercise though. It's a good exercise to try to figure out how you do it right this time. <laughs> one more thing right here, I still have time. I'm going to go right in here, put this little branch going through there. I think it's behind there. This branch too, we're going to... Uh, let's hit there and so the, yes the illumination is a little bit tough it's a little bit more difficult more challenging but try it you know try it try it try it and see if you can get into the soft edges hard edges and that one turned out much much better so let's just tape off and that's about all i'm gonna do i'm gonna take the tape off and show you how we did compare it to this afternoon but if it wasn't for this afternoon's one i wouldn't have gotten to this one so you know sometimes the second one is always better i mean it is always better the second one is always going to be better because you learn from the first one. And it, so basically the first one is a sketch. It's a value study. It's a color study. And it's a little, what this is really, really thin paper. Maybe this is even 90 pound. <laughs> it's really thin paper. Boy, I didn't realize I was working on really thin paper. Is this even art? Is this even Stonehenge? <laughs> All right, so there you go, guys. Um, let me show you my other one <laughs> in comparison. The one I learned from. So this is the one we learned from. And yes, indeed, uh, much better um, colors and a lot of grays in this one, but it brings out the colors of the violets and the lavenders. And, and so there you go, guys. And this one actually was bigger, too. Look at how much bigger that one was. So I found these sheets of paper. And um, here you go, guys. Thanks again. Let me see if there's any more questions. And so, again, look at my... Um, Liz, I had, yes, I, I did have a, um, the beer. Um, the beer was a Pipe, Pipeworks Premium Pilsner, and it was a nine and a half, nine and a half, and cheers, guys. Until next week, and look at my website, make sure that if I have one or not, because I will be teaching on Thursday, or um, I, I think I'm teaching that, let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, I will be teaching, so I think I will have it there, um, probably in my hotel room. Otherwise, it'll be in Ann Arbor at their um at the place i'm teaching all right and so until next week and again also another thing um if you have something you want to paint and this was a suggestion um somebody had suggested to me they wanted to do 
a um, um, magnolia uh, blossom. And so I took their um, advice. <laughs> so blame her. <laughs> it didn't work out. I forgot who um, suggested that. Um, but anytime you have a suggestion of something you want to paint, maybe trains. Maybe we can try a train. We'll see. All right. So cheers. Here's until next week, guys. And let me see what